the regional director, Ghana Education Service. The regional director, Department of Committee Development, Honorable Municipal Chief Executive, members of the board of directors, representatives of political parties present, principals of sister institutions and schools present, parents, staff, students, members of the press, all here assembled. I'm pleased this morning to welcome you to this important ceremony. I consider this ceremony very important because it is the second of its kind since this institute was established. It is heartwarming that this program will provide an opportunity for political and administrative authorities to get first-hand information about this institute what we have been able to achieve over the last period to date, as well as our challenges, so that together we can develop strategies to enhance our achievements and combat our challenges. Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Regional Minister, the Work Committee Development Vocational Technical Institute was started in 1987 by the Department of Committed Development as Women's Training Institute under the name WA Women's Training Institute, WTI. Its original focus was to train women to be able to manage their household properly and for enhanced income generation through self-employment. This institute started with only 15 women and has gradually grown in numbers over the years. Considering the growing unemployment of Ghana youth, the focus of the institute was changed from training of women to training of Ghanaian youth, in brackets, guests, who for one reason or the other who cannot complete the then middle school or junior high school, most of whom were unfortunately found on the streets. Its aim was to bring them out of the streets and provide them with vocational skills that will make them self-employed. This focus was later expanded in the year 2015 to add technical programs to the existing vocational programs to pave the way for graduates who manage to complete their course of study successful to continue to polytechnics and other tertiary institutions to further their education. In this particular year, the first batch of male students were enrolled. Courses offered in the institution include core subjects, English language, mathematics, integrated science, social studies, entrepreneurial skills, and ICT. We have the elective subjects, which are building and construction, general textiles, which is known formally weaving, Hospitality management, it was formerly known as catering. Fashion and design, who was known as dressmaking. ICT and home management, which is a departmental course. With this vision of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Addo, Dankwa Akufo Addo, to make Tibet an integral part of the Ghana education system. The World Committee Development Vocational Institute was among the institutes taken on board for this program. This brought on board as many as 388 students who were placed at the program of which 235 reported made out of 112 males and 123 females, 
bringing the total enrollment at the institute to 631 from last year population of 520 students. Of these, 437 are boarders and 194 day students. That is made out of 342 females and 289 males. With staff strength of 38, made out of 28 teaching staff and 10 non-teaching staff. On assumption of duty as the principal in 2019, I had to carefully study the causes of the low enrollment in the institute, which reveals that many who get enrolled fall out before their completion, defeating the purpose for which the institute was established because they were unable to meet course of their studies. I had to take the risk by reducing the school fees from 500 Ghana cities. That is 100 Ghana cities as fees and 400 Ghana cities for feeding a term, which accounted for most students dropping out of the institute to 300 Ghana cities. That is 100 Ghana cities as fees and 200 Ghana cities for feeding a term in collaboration with the PTA and Board of Directors. However, the current student placed and the TVET are beneficiaries of the government free senior high school flagship program. Why the continuous student, that is year two and three students, still pay school fees? The institute has a vibrant PTA and a board of governance with whose support and cooperation we are able to achieve some significant changes in the institute. This, Mr. Chairman, marks the second graduation of students from this institute. That is last year and this year. Since its establishment, no graduation ceremony of this sort was ever organized. Considering the norm in most professional institutions to organize graduation ceremony for students who pass through this institution, we felt it necessary to continue with these graduation programs for our students. Today, we are passing out 160 students who have successfully completed different courses of study from 2019 to 2020. <laughs> courses and number of graduates in each department. The building technology, we have 29 graduates. Function and designing. 58. General Electricals, 39. Obstacle Management, 22. Tesla Hand Weaving, 12. Civil Program. Under the Government of Ghana's initiative to accelerate the development in Ghana through education, the Civil Program has brought on board new courses as cosmetology, carpentry, and ICT as an elective subject again. Hence, the theme for this program is technical and vocational training, a partnership to national development. <laughs> Special initiatives. To ameliorate the high cost of grinding flour for student meals, the Institute applied to the Member of Parliament for War Central, Honorable Alaji Dr. Rashid Pelpo, who supported us with an amount of 4,500 Ghana cities. 
with the institute also adding its internal generated fund of an amount of 4,840 Ghana cities to procure and install the Ghana mill. What is now left is the connecting the plant to power. The institute has also started constructing a fence wall with its internal generated fund. The institute also constructing office for two heads of department. This project is at length level and needs support to be completed. In the department are electrical and bleeding and technology. A three unit classroom block being undertaken by the PTA is at its lentil stage. Mr. Chairman, we cannot achieve without challenges. So permit me to give you our few challenges. Regional director. <laughs> director. Our first challenge is inadequate staff accommodation. This is to say that only three members of staff, including the principal, stay on campus, while the rest permanent daily from their respectful homes. Two, inadequate classrooms. This has forced management to consult pavilions to house some of the departments. This is still inadequate considering the growing number of students we have. Three, cost of electricity supply. The high cost of electricity to lighten the institute for students to study and to power mechanized borehole is draining much of the IGF of the institute. This is as a result of use of pre pay meter being used. We are using eight meters in this institute. Four, documentation of school land. Management is working seriously to get proper documentation for the institute land area from the land commission being supported by the PTA. Way forward. We will to humble appeal to government through our honorable regional minister to provide the institute with some financial assistance to enable us carry out our mandate effectively and efficiently. It will be appreciated if government could come in to provide additional classrooms, dormitories, and residence for tutors to improve teaching and learning and also support the PTA in the documentation of the institute land space, and also to complete the fencing wall project being undertaken by the school to emulate the incident of encouragement and unacceptable interruptions from deviance. It will also be appreciated if the one municipal assembly could allocate at least one store room in the market to the institute to display and sell artifacts produced by the students. Appreciations. We wish to appreciate the support and cooperation from all stakeholders of this institute during the period. A special mention must be made of the national director and staff of the Department of Community Development Headquarters, the regional director and her municipal and district directors in the region, PTA, staff of the institute, and everyone present here to grace this occasion. May God richly bless each and everyone here. Thank you very much. Name the school on where the school is located. 
I want uh, some papal nice here. We had a sample map, regional director, and then one nice here. Let's be to begin to get a name for this institute. It's an assignment to all of us. When we done that, because it is under Tampalkani, whether Tampapana can locate or can get us a land to expand this particular institution. There was an issue in Eastern region. There were two technical institutes here. They brought on board one of the new distance. So where it's located, they say Adyambra Technical Institute. Even though it was in Koforidua, but the section name is Adyambra. That's why I'm telling the Tampapanena, Owana, the Assemblyman, everybody here to begin to get a name for this particular technical institute. Thank you. education a panacea to national development and I'm here representing him with my other colleague, uh, colleague who is the HOD for electrical and electronics engineering so briefly I will just talk about the TV right? then he will just zoom in on the program that you run here and then you do fashion electricals building and construction fashion and then catering so that he will be more specific and zoom in on the courses that you do here so that it will benefit our graduates and first of all, I would like to say congratulations to our graduates. You have done very well. And as your school anthem says, arise and shine. And from, from here, I'm encouraging you to arise and go to Dr. Hilia Lima Technical University to buy application form because it is free. So that you will go and shine there and make your school very proud and your parents as well. So let me just go on. I will be very brief. As the topic says, TVET education, a panacea to national development. One of the aims of education is dignity of labor. And this aim encourages individuals and nations to use national resources in their immediate environment for personal and national development. Hello. Technical education has to do with the practical use of tools, equipment, machinery, methods, and techniques in science and industry, while vocational education has to do with the practical skills and knowledge that a person needs in order to do a particular job. It has been argued that general education is designed to make a person an effective consumer, while Steve Wright is designed to make a person an efficient and effective producer. That was according to Graham 1971. Japan, that is why Japan in her total economic crumble during the World War II sent most of her academia and professionals including lawyers, doctors, etc. who were seen as mere consumers to be given technical and industrial training in the industrial setups in Europe. After the training, they returned to Japan to build Japan. That, this explains why Japan is regarded as one of the biggest economy. It is now evidence that when education of all inclusive hands-on training is provided, a nation shall then stop producing scholars with literate minds and literate hands. Most nations have come to realize that TVET is a panacea to national development. It is for these reasons that the government of Ghana, government of Ghana's white paper on education, that was in 2004, acknowledged that practical skills training, referred to as TVET, provides a mix of knowledge and career focus hands-on skills-based education that is needed to run the productive sectors of the economy and build the nation as well. A call is made on both pre-tertiary and tertiary TVET institutions to concentrate more on practical skills training to prepare graduates for real-world 
of work which is in tune with the need of industry. Then, for instance, let's take government initiatives. If you look at the One Village, One Dam, like the other programs, 1D, 1F, Agenda 111, we need your caliber of people at a higher level to undertake these programs. For example, if they are saying about, if they are talking about 1D, 1 dump, or 1 village, 1 factory, or whatever, you need somebody with that practical aspect. For instance, the dump, they can use it for irrigation, and they need somebody, even the construction of the dump, they need somebody from the BT industry. For instance, the building technology people, the construction people, to undertake that uh, pro uh, project. Even the irrigation, we need somebody from the engineering background to be able to design those kind of dams that will be effectively used. So now that uh, your team is TVET, a panacea for national development, you couldn't have invited any other person than the institution, Dr. Hilia Lima Technical University. And since your programs are fashion, design, catering, building, construction, and then the others. I will now let my other colleague come in and zoom in on those uh, courses so that it will enable you and give you more detailed access to our programs and then how you are supposed to uh, fill the application form, what you should do, what you need, so that it will guide you in your filling of the application mm -hmm. form. Thank you. And I just want to say that our application form for this year is free. You don't have to pay anything. It is free. Just go onto our website, which is www. DHLTU, the DHLTU is Dr. Hilia Lima Technical University dot edu dot gh and it, you have access to our application which is free. You are not supposed to pay anything. Thank you. Our second graduation ceremony of WA Community Development Vocational Technical Institute. Graduation ceremonies have become annual rituals in most of our schools, through which a young, determined young men and women graduate from our institute and are ushered into the world of work. I'm grateful to Almighty God that the institute has taken yet a bold step to organize today's event, even though times are hard. Mr. Chairman, the Department of Community Development as a government entity has a noble mandate of promoting and ensuring the improvement in the living standard of people in rural areas and under, under disadvantaged section of urban communities. One of the function is the provision of employable skills to less privileged offering formal vocational and technical training to these young men and women whom were not having the needed skills to position them in the area of work. The Wild Community Development Vocational Institute is one of the 25 number training institutes under the department in the country and is why is strategically placed in the regional capital to serve the entire region. Since its inception, the Institute has trained thousands of young men and women in various fields of vocational training, notable in fashion and designing, catering, hairdressing, home management, among others. The graduates from our institution are imparted with the requisite vocational skills, knowledge, expertise to enable them to establish themselves or serve as skills workforce for companies in order to create wealth and to reduce poverty so as to enable them to live a meaningful life and contribute towards the socioeconomic development of their immediate families, communities, and the nation at large. With the introduction of ICT, basic entrepreneurial and business management skills and home management in our training models, our trainees are not only equipped with skills in operating their own businesses, but also equipped with important family life education to improve home care, 
food processing, personal hygiene, childcare, among others. Again, our students are also taught core subjects like English, mathematics, and other important courses, which are necessary for them to progress through the academic ladder if they wish. We at the department level, both national and regional, doing our best to ensure that conducive atmosphere is created to ensure effective teaching and learning in our school. Mr. Chairman, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this year's celebration is technical and vocational training, a panacea to national development. To me, it's a clear call to all of us, especially those who are holding the belief that technical and vocational skills training is the result field for the weaker minds. This is because the development of any nation depends largely on the size of its industries and skills labor force. And it is only through the provision of vocational and technical education that the nation can feed its industry with smarts, critical thinkers, problem solvers, and analytical workforce. It is therefore important that the public is continuously sensitized on the importance of technical and vocational training to contribute to the employment, creation, and national development. This is the only sure key for creating a strong and well-developed communities and country. Mr. Chairman, the passage of the Pre-Tertiary Education Act 2020, Act 1049, has resulted in the establishment of TVET service. The objective of the service is to manage, oversee, implement, and provide national policies and programs related to pre-tertiary technical and vocational education in the country. In line with this, the provision of the Act All Non-Formal Training Institute providing extension services in vocational and technical training have to relinquish their institution, including assets, the trainees' population, as well as the trainers to the service. The aim is to facilitate harmonization of TVS education in the country through the process of regulation, standardization, and delivery. Consequently, the department would have to yield its 25 number community development vocational institute, it as a staff to TVET service with time. The transition process is being managed by the head office, the Ministry of Local Government Decentralization and Development, and head of civil service to ensure that the welfare of our staff, as well as the vulnerable target trainees, are not disadvantaged. Mr. Chairman, last year, this school made us proud by producing a prestigious national award winner. And it was none other person than the principal herself, Madam Sophia. <laughs> On behalf of the ministry and the department, we congratulate you and your staff once again. At this juncture, Mr. Siyama, kindly permit me to reiterate some challenges facing the school. The school is poised to deliver to the highest standard if collective steps are taken to address the underlisted bottlenecks which are impeding its activities. Mr. Chairman, lack of fence, a well fence wall on the institute is a bigger challenge. There's inadequate furniture and dormitories, absolute infrastructure, lack of government subvention, inadequate accommodation for staff among others. We therefore call on benevolent individual, civil society organization, sister government agencies to assist the institute, especially in the area of infrastructure upliftment to ensure that the institute is put on its right equilibrium. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I cannot end my speech without acknowledging the efforts of our able principal and her lieutenants in turning the fortunes around for our graduates. I hold the belief that if you don't receive your reward here on earth, you will get it in heaven. <laughs> you want to do Mr. Chairman, the Municipal Assembly, Board of Government, PTHA, and all who have contributed in many ways to the... Okay. Through the running of the academic year, we salute you sincerely. Permit me to also congratulate our gallant graduates for their patience, hard work throughout their stay in our institute. We are convinced that 
you are well equipped with the needed required skill to propel you in life. As such, we expect you to go out there and effectively put into practice the skills acquired to benefit yourself, your communities, and the nation at large. Know that society is watching, and your action and inaction would show the kind of training you have received here. You must therefore conduct yourselves well in society and serve as ambassadors for the Institute. On this note, I say thank you very much. Director has taken quite a lot of the things I would have loved to share because I am a product of TVED myself. And I'm happy to be here today to be part of this graduation ceremony. They simply have just one short message for the graduates. Education has severally been defined. And I'm not here to give any definition. But what I can conveniently say is that education simply is a process that makes you useful to yourself and to mankind. And what we have seen today already is an indication that education is on. Because specifically we are talking about Tibet. And almost all the display I've seen is a demonstration of Tibet. Tibet in the xylophone, Tibet in the dance, Tibet in the songs that were sung. Almost every single thing. Gone are the days where we had considered Tibet as one of the low level of education one can think of. It has been revised. And we are going forward with Tibet. Tibet is considered to be one of the highly, that is where you have all the intelligence. As the first display that came by way of Zalifo. How many of us? I think my small education, I was told, tune, tune, semi-tune, tune, tune, tune. And the gentleman has already displayed it to us. I think what I've said, some people would have been confused. But a gentleman who played the Zalifon would know what I'm talking about. That is Tibet for us. Team, the cameraman we see here, everything there is Tibet. The chairs we are sitting on is Tibet. The dresses we are wearing, Tibet. So what else do we do? We eat Tibet. The muzzle you cut by way of TZ. You, you don't take measure, any measuring tape to measure the ball. But you cut it such that it's able to go through your mouth, through to the esophagus, and to the stomach. Tibet for you. Tibet for us. What else do we need? Tibet. When principal was talking, I put a note how she was able to reduce fees from 500 to 300 on her own. The director has made me to know why. How she is bold, 
to defy the odds to get us to achieve what we want. And that has earned her, maybe they were the bold steps that she took that made them to recognize her and to give her the award. We must somewhere, sometime, take the bold steps, go outside the ordinary to get things done. The numbers that we have seen today from a humble beginning of a small number, here we are, with the numbers competing favorable in all secondary senior highs we have. And that is to tell us how we have grown, and I do want to believe, with this absorption into the steeper services, the number will increase the more. And that is the more reason why the challenge has thrown to us. We will work together to their challenges. It's a human institution. And every human institution, we, we, don't, we anticipate challenges. And together, we we'll work at it to resolve them. 160 of you are graduating today. Can we do the multiples? What do we hope to achieve with 160 graduates? Train middle level manpower. If you completed, some of us have said this separately, completed the senior high schools. You have no employable skills. Here you are. I want to believe if we had partnered with some of the hotels around us, quite a number of the people who have complete, done the catering related programs would have quickly been absorbed. You are employable. You have the skills. And as Hillel Liman, Dr. Hillel Liman Technical University, by way of the presentation, they have shown us the way. We only need to start somewhere, and then we'll end it at the top. I want to employ all of us so that we begin to count the 160 of you that are going out within the next year. If, are we able to add one or two to ourselves if you are even able to get one, on the average, everybody won one. The next year, we'll be counting how many? 320. Do a multiples of that in five years. The number of people who have been self-employed, contributing their quota to national development, would have been enhanced. And that is the more reason why the team chosen, there is no development that can meaningfully take place except through TVET. And that is the more reason why I'm very glad today to be part of this graduation program. Little did I know, I think Pen Principal came to me. We shared one or two ideas, but I didn't know I'll be part of this graduation ceremony to see to it that at least the 160 of you, we may do a tracer up to see where you are. If you are not able to shine, we will pay your anthem. Arise. You have been opened. It is up to you now to arise fully and to let your corner there be seen. Your life will only be seen and you make, you brighten the corner in which you are based on the training that has been given to you. All that you need is some little one or two support systems and then you get to the top. I don't have too much to say, but to impress upon all of us, we will be forming linkages. My office, the door is always open. At least I can say it for nothing a lot. Eight hours in a day is open. The key is not locked because I don't work in the night. I work in the night in the house, but not in the office. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say 24 hours a day. But if you come to me with your complaints, I certainly should be ready to partnerize. Because as I indicated, I majored in construction technology. And this is where I am. So I want to urge all of us, Stemman, as we have been talking together, we have had several discussions as to how we can partner. I know if we walk across here, there may be welders around. We may not have the resources to do the samples here. After you have done the sample, what do you do? We would have learned the skills, we throw it away, but we want to go into real production, whereby we link the students with some uh, uh, 
uh, entrepreneurs somewhere that they can produce artifacts that are for that can go into the open market. But thank God, principal has given us an indication that we have enough to see, we have enough to sell, whereby uh, a request is made for some a location of a store for us to display the item. That is the basis of a linkage we can get and we will partner, principal, my door is open, let's partner each other and see the way forward. Thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you parents, you have chosen the right course. I do want to believe some would have confused you, tried to confuse you that why would your son or daughter go in for this insult of the senior high. There are some we are trying to change the, the, the narrative. That is better. I can see comfortably the men are competing favorably. The men are initially the, pro, the, the institute was established for young women. As it is, men are there, and I can see some of the graduates, quite a good number, are also men, and they are going to graduate. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations once again. <laughs>
who were the founders of this very institution. I remember vividly the former regional minister, Mr. Albora Antongmini. He was then with the social welfare and they were promoting mass education then. This is history. Probably I was not there when these decisions were taken, but it is a household matter we all know because this land is ours. He approached the Wana and my uncle, Alaji Isa Bukhari, the late Buturena, was tasked to come and find a land which is appropriate for the establishment of what we now have today. So indeed, the appeal from the directorate and the institution for more land, indeed, it is an old relationship between the palace and the institution. So fortunately, the Tampal Panana himself is here. He is the host chief for the school. We will send this message back to the overlord and see how we can help to get more land for expansion for the institution. I have also noticed and observed that the school has come from a far away place. We all knew it to be women training and there were some funny, funny, catchy nicknames for the school. Excuse me to say, Kapokoba School. Today, it is no longer Pokoba School. It is a, an institution which has produced graduates. And uh, Dr. Hila Leman Technical University has opened its arms, welcoming you to its fold so that you will advance. Not just the ladies, but the gentlemen in your midst. So we have realized that you have a lot of infrastructural challenges. Even the holding of this ceremony under the open sun like this is really something that we have to cry and appeal to the authorities to find an appropriate auditorium for the school. So this is what we have observed. We will send a message to the overlord to also put a word across for the school so that you get an appropriate auditorium for your functions. We have realized that the classroom blocks or your lecture theaters are inadequate. The old structures we know are what I have come to see. I have seen some new ones anyway, but I think there's much for improvement. So we'll, in our own way, help in spreading the message to the appropriate authorities that there is infrastructural handicap in this institution so that whatever way they can to help boost it up. I also want to say that let's not just rely on the government. There are the private sector and NGOs are there. We should all put our hands on deck and see how we can appeal to such institutions, the NGOs and the private enterprises, to partner with this school to develop the institution. Because indeed, like the original director said, for Tibet, it is everywhere. Even our traditional dance, he, like, he likened it to Tibet. So of course, the TZ we eat at home it's Tibet because you learn how to cook better here. You learn how to dance better here. You learn how to weave the clothes for our smocks better here. So indeed, we are all intricately linked with this institution. So we we'll all help to, in our own small way, to see how we can boost the development of this institution. So on behalf of the WANA, we are so much grateful to Allah for bringing the school this way. And of course, I can't sit without 
commending the principal for this institution. Madam, you have done a good job. We have all seen your efforts. And indeed, tomorrow when you hear the cock crowing, know that the people of Ducey are putting their hands together for you. Indeed, and on behalf of all the chiefs here, we wish you people well, and we pray that the graduates will not relent in their efforts. As you leave this institution, you move and know that the sky is your limit. To the students here, you have seen where your, your seniors have reached. Learn hard and stay focused and do well to pass where they have reached. That is the tax for you in school. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you go to the schools that we have within the region, their first enrollment data is here. Some have enrolled less than 200 with their all facilities. It means that Tibet education is seeing the way forward. And no government can succeed. The president is saying that Ghana beyond aid. We cannot achieve Ghana beyond aid without including Tibet indication, we can't get it. To the Prince, uh, Vice Chancellor for uh, Dr. Hilaire Le Mans Technical University, she indicated it. Data indicated it. What I'm wearing is Tibet. Even before the coming to the win of well, God used Tibet education to create the well. We all know that God used seven days or eight days to create the well. So each day, go to use Tibet education. You can see how Tibet is very important. Another time, Madam appealed for support. I want to appeal to the ministers, the DECs, and the politicians. How much do you need to construct a three classroom? We need less than 200,000 Ghana cities. Can't our politicians, who flow money during election time, more than one billion, can they use it to come and build three classrooms for us? Can the regional minister put a three classroom here and indicate Dr. Afik Ali? What is more than that? Can the DC MC will put auditorium here and put it a large tire in Saku? Why can't he do that? Can Rasid Pelpo cannot put classroom and put Rasid Pelpo here? And then all these graduates, they are all voters. Remember, you put this particular edifice here, they will vote for you. You don't wait until party's time, you go and throw your money on the air. We are seeing this thing in Southern sector, where our politicians have put black classrooms, have put dormitories, and indicate their names. Why can't you do that at Portis and Upper West Virginia? Please, whoever is close to the regional minister, the MC, the a member of parliament, that they can do better than this. So, that is Madame Appeal. On the case of the admission to what technical, uh, sorry, Dr. Hilaire Lehmann, because some students become confused. Somebody was going to uh, the Dr. Lehmann and then they came to my school. I said, my school is not up to university level. <laughs> Please, graduates, we are the first people 
to appreciate what we have in the region. In my school, every day, day in, day out, you see Tamale, you see Sunyane, Accra, they are coming. But let us make use of our own first. I'm sure she indicated that you don't pay anything for the admission fee. Please, we want to see the next graduation or the next, uh, what do you call it? Industrial ceremony, matriculation. We want to see as many as 100 students coming from this institute. My name is Tatsunya Paul. Actually, when I came here, I really do all the time I entered class and I cooperate with whatever that our masters are or telling us. Anything that they say we should do, I actually cooperate, follow the school rules and regulations. And actually, I don't disappoint them. I don't disappoint them as usually. They also did the same as I didn't, I did not disappoint them. What they have done to me, I really be happy with what they have done to me. My colleague students, what I would like to tell them is to, or they should, they should cooperate and, and follow whatever that the masters are being given to them or any advice. Bone cancer, Bridget. I have put so many much effort in it because at first when I came to this school, I thought I, wasn't, I couldn't be able to make it. But with more efforts from me, being disciplined, attending classes regularly, and respecting staff of this school has made me achieve this great event in this school. I am most grateful to God, and I thank God for how far he has brought me. I would like to encourage them to take from us whatever we have exhibited on campus before we are living now, so that they may one day also become what we are doing here.